Indeed, the people of God are to lift up the name of Jesus. And one of the best ways to lift up the name of Jesus is to bring down to earth the essence of His teachings, to operationalize the high spirituality that the Lord Jesus had taught us. For centuries, corporate religion had been known for doctrine, even for crowd control and social engineering. But personal spirituality is what the Lord Jesus had taught. Personal wholeness, personal peace, even personal goodness. Religious persons could really be unkind and even cruel, as history has taught us. But spiritual people are nice. And the people of Jesus, the Jesus followers, should strive to be nice more than to be religiously correct or doctrinally sound. Well, that is very desirable. But the important thing is to be nice. Napakabait, napakabuti ng Panginoong Jesus. At ang nagalit nga sa Kanya, madalas niyang mga kinikritisize yung mga Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the teachers of religion, whose formality and rigid spirituality made them very unkind to many people. Kaya nga tin talaga ngayon na dapat pagsikapan para maging katulad ni Jesus is to be a nicer person. And that's the title of our message, Be a Nicer Person. Let spirituality show through the daily things that we do. And let Jesus be known through the actions that people see in our lives. Salamat Ama, dahil kayo po ay Diyos na mabuti. Kayo ay Diyos na mabait. Kayo ay Diyos na mapagkalinga. We thank you, Father, that you are kind and nice to us. We ask you to cleanse us from all our iniquities. Wash us with the blood of Jesus. Make us whole. And more than that, O oh Lord, let our behavior be that of Jesus. Turuan niyo po kami, Panginoon, na ang mga kabutihan na napag-aaralan namin mamunga sa pang-araw-araw na buhay. Sa parang nakikita, nadirinig, nadarama na aming kapwa, yun ay aming kagandahang loob. We ask you, Father, to be our teacher. Be the sole speaker and preacher right now. Use your servant only as your instrument. Teach us. Guide us. Pagalingin niyo po ang aming mga karamdaman, palakasin niyo ang aming mga kahinaan, at liwanagan niyo ang aming buhay. We ask you, in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, Amen. Being spiritual is really the challenge. Human civilization had been filled with religiosity, and yet one of the things that history has bequeathed to us is a lot of religious wars. Ang mahalaga talaga sa tao kung naniniwala sa Diyos ay yung maging mabait at maging mabuti. Be a nicer person and the Lord will see that God is at work in your life. For instance, give money that you can spare to someone who needs it. Not necessarily to institutions that are already very rich, but give money to the needy. Ephesians 4.28 a man must work that he may have something to share with those in need. Isang malino na pagtuturo na magtrabaho tayo para lumampas pa sa kailanganin natin ang ating kikitain ng may sumobra para maipamahagi natin sa mga nangangailangang karapat-dapat. Sino bang dapat binibigyan yung mga mahihina, mga may karamdaman at hindi kaya ng kanilang katawan o kalagayan na arugain ang kanilang mga sarili? The Bible teaches us to produce surplus for others. 2 Corinthians 8.7 See that you also excel in the grace of giving. Self-denial for the sake of others is high spirituality. Yung pagtanggi sa mga hilig at mga gusto pa ng consumption ng ating mga sarili para may maibigay naman tayo sa ating kapwa, yun, doon natin nakikita na kumikilos ang Diyos sa puso ng isang tao. 2 Corinthians 1.4 He comforts us when we are in trouble so that we can share that same comfort with others in trouble. God gives you so that you can give to others. Pagka sumosobra, alam natin higit na sa ating pangangailangan ng ating mga natatanggap, ibig sabihin noon, binibinga ka ng Diyos ng sobra para ipamudbud mo sa mga pinakatamang tumanggap. At yung mga pinakatamang tumanggap ay hindi laging yung mga taong mahal natin o malapit sa atin sa buhay, lalo kung makukonsente lang natin sila maging tamad at pabaya. Kundi inilalagay mo yon kung saan magkakaroon ng bunga at tubo at bulaklak 
kung saan siya magiging kapakipakinabang. Be nicer to others. Let someone tell a story without interrupting with a story of your own. Napakalaking pagpipigil sa sarili na pagka may nagpukwento na nagbiyahe siya sa Hong Kong, ay pigilin mo ang iyong sarili na kagagaling-galing mo lang sa London. Napakalaking pagtitimbi sa sarili na may sabing nagkakaroon siya ng bahay sa Camellia Homes, ay pigilin mo ang sarili mong sabihing meron kang bahay sa BF Executive Village. Napakaraming pagtitimpi ang kailangan pag may nagkukwentong yung anak niya, fifth honorable mention, para huwag mo kailangan panggitin na yung anak mo, valid Victorian. Kung minsan ang nagkukwento sa atin, hindi pa nakakatapos, dinadaig na natin ng kwento natin para tayo maging bida. Self-control is very high spirituality. Especially when it is controlling your tongue to outdo somebody already telling his story or her story. Job 33.30, pay attention and don't interrupt. Being heard alone could bring healing to many people. And when we lend them their, our ears, we help them heal. But when we outdo their story with a better and a more fantastic one of our own, we can add to their burdens and sorrow. Pagka lagi nating dinadaig ang kapong nagkukwento, sa halip na siya'y makaginawa, baka humira pa lalo ang globe. Kumisan yung makapagsalita lang ang kapwa, makapagpahayag, makapaglabas ng niloloob, lalo ng sama ng globe, ay eh malaki ng ginawa. Tapos kung puputulin mo yung kwento niya, at ikaw magpapatuloy at kwento mo na ang pagpapansinin yung dalawa, kawawa naman siya. Baka nga kaya nagkukwento, ay eh nangangailangan ng tulong. Every storytelling is a cry for help. That's why it's good to listen to people. Resist the temptation to upstage others. Listen without giving an advice or opinion unless asked. Gano'ng karami sa atin mga kapatid ang pagka may nagsasalita, nagbibigay tayo agad ng judgment ng ating opinion, ng ating payo, eh hindi naman hinihingi. This is the vice of many religious people, always imposing their advice, their opinion on others without being asked. James 1.19, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Self-restraint is high spirituality. Ang pagpipigil ng kumakating bibig, gustong laging magpayo, Gustong laging mag-display ng karunungan, ang pagpipigil niyan ay napakataas na uri ng pananalig. Job 2.11-13 When Job's three friends heard about all the troubles that had come upon him, they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Alam niyo yung pagtitimpi na magsalita, napakalaking paggalang sa kapwa. Lalo ko ang iniisip mo na ang kapwa mo'y nagkamali, ang kapwa mo'y merong ginawang labag sa iyong payo, labag sa isang katuroang ibinigay mo, napakadali magsabing, I told you so. Sasabihin mo ka, di ba? Sabi ko talaga sa iyo. Nakita mo na? Napakadali na Palabasin sa ating bibigang paninisi pagka dumarating ang isang taong nakabagsak ang kanyang mga balikat, nakayoko ang kanyang noo at nalalambot sa kanyang mga sariling kamalian. Pero doon natin kailangan ng pagpipigil sa sarili. Because a mistaken poor person who is broken with that same mistake knows his own sorrow. He knows that he is the manufacturer of his problems. And in such moments of difficulty, That is not a good time for us to dispense advice or to dispense our wisdom and impose it on people. Ang kailangan ng mga tao na kakamali na dadapa ay pangunawa, pagmamahal, pagtanggap na walang patakaran kung yun ang magdadala sa kanya ng paghihilom at paggaling na kanyang mga sugat. Kaya kung minsan napakahirap na naliligid ka ng mga relihiyosong tao, laging may payo, laging may paninisi, laging may panguhusga. Maging ang Panginoong Yesus, pinapakita sa atin ang pinakamagandang halimbawa ng pagtanggap sa mga taong nagkakamali na hindi sila kailangang laging pagalitan. Hindi sila laging kailangang usigin, surutin, at ibuyang-yang sa madla ang mga pagkakamali ng taong ito. 
importanteng maging magalang tayo sa nadarama ng ating kapwa. Hindi lang mapagbigyan yung katin ng ating bibig. How else can we be nicer? How else can we be like Jesus? How else can we be like the great men and women of faith through all the ages? Let someone teach you. Humility is high spirituality. Kahit kayo magaling, siguradong mayroong isang taong mas magaling sa inyo sa ibang larangan ng buhay. Kahit kayo specialist, you might be a specialist, but certainly specialists have very limited ranges. Because the more you specialize, the more you know about a little thing, and the less you know about everything else. So you should be teachable and willing to listen to others. Sabi nga ng desiderata, even to the dull and ignorant, because they too have their story. So dapat lagi tayong willing makinig. Professor ka, ang galing-galing mo sa mga academic things, pwede ka naman paturo sa isang mekaniko kung paano nagpapalit ng gulong. Teach. People teach. And when we allow people to teach, they blossom. We allow them to operate in their areas of strength. Therefore, they find more meaning in their existence. They find more belongingness in society. That's why when you allow people to teach you, you actually lift them up. And probably that's what they need. So as not to commit suicide tonight. Yung merong magbigay sa kanila ng kaunting halaga. And this is where too much congregationalism closes minds and ears. Because we don't want to listen to anything that is not in perfect harmony with what we already have embraced. And we're willing, even eager, to persecute people who have other sets of beliefs. Kaya napakahirap talagang kasama yung sobrang mga relihiyoso sa buhay. Ewan ko kung pinapangarap nyo na makasama sa buhay yung sobrang relihiyoso. Na puro na lamang pagtutuwid ng kapwa ang inaatupag at hindi na niya iniintindi kung nasasaktan ka o kailangan mo muna magpagaling ng iyong sugat. Ang nakikinig kahit marunong na ay lalong dumurunong pa. Pero yung walang alam na hindi nakikinig nananatiling mangmang. Proverbs 4.1 My child, listen closely to my teachings and learn common sense. So honor someone by being his or her pupil. The more distinguished you are or the more distinguished you think you are, be someone else's student. So that that person might probably claim that he has taught you this or that and that will give him an additional self-worth. Siyempre, bahala ka na mag-filter. Hindi ka naman basta makikinig na lang sa lahat ay tinuturo sa'yo. Pero ang mahalaga, willing ka man lang makinig. Kahit ka magulang, may matututunan ka sa anak, tama na yung hindi na nakikinig ang magulang kahit kailan dahil lang magulang siya. Dapat ang magulang nga, lalong willing. Lalo tinustusan mo ang iyong anak na mag-aral nito at gano'n, edi dapat nakinabang ka, makikinig ka sa natutunan niya, hindi yung babaliwalain mo dahil magulang ka. Nakakaroon tuloy ng generation gap. Hindi ko mo ikaw inapakahusay na, ayaw mo nang makinig kahit kanino man lang. Room for improvement is the biggest room in the world. Learning never ends. And everybody has some lesson to teach us. Especially, of course, our elders, our parents. You know what you learn in school? You learn information. You learn pieces and bits of information. But people who are very informed are not necessarily wise. Wisdom comes with time, with perspective, with age. That's why young people who are overloaded with lots of information must balance that with the wisdom of the ages or the aged. Proverbs 6.20, obey the teachings of your parents. And this is one of the greatest challenges to the youth of today. They think they know everything. Everything is within their fingertips. One click and you get to know an information. But how you process that information and make it work for you and for everyone else is a great challenge. Our knowledge must be tempered with wisdom, with experience and kindness. That's why it's important to listen to others. And when you listen to your parents, you honor them. Proverbs 5, 12 to 14, I hated advice and correction. I paid no attention to my teachers, 
And now, I am disgraced in front of everyone. Gano karami ang nagpapatotoo sa atin na napahamak, napariwara, napa, nasira ang buhay dahil hindi nakinig sa magulang. Mahalagang makinig. You would be nice to the teacher and to all others if you allowed them to teach you. You can always filter what you hear, but you could always be courteous to at least listen. Give your full attention to the person in front of you. Napakadali na ngayon maging impersonal dahil sa media, dahil sa internet, dahil sa napakaraming paraan ng technology. Pero pag may kaharap kayo, ibigay nyo yung buong-buo nyong atensyon. May kausap kayo. Kahit maraming tao, for one single moment in time, look into another person's eye and listen intently and really hear what the person is saying. That is basic humanity. And that is deep spirituality. Yung damihin mo ang tibok ng puso ng iyong kapwa, pumintig ang iyong puso kasabay ng pagpintig ng puso niya kahit sandali lang. Dahil yun ay lagi niyang mararamdaman at hindi natin alam yun lang pala ang kailangan niya para maitawid siya sa isang hirap, sa isang pait, sa isang sakit sa buhay. Romans 13.7 Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Giving honor and attention to others is godliness of the highest order. Why? Because every person is God's creation. Every person could reflect a facet of God. And every person could have a need that you could fill. You were created for a purpose. Hindi tayo nilikha para lang sa sarili. Hindi tayo nabubuhay lang para sa sarili. Hindi lang tayo nabubuhay para sa sarili nating kalendaryo, sa sarili nating schedule, sa sarili nating agenda o mga mithiin sa buhay. Do not count people as disturbances to your schedule when they have a need. You could have been gifted and empowered by God for such a time as this when you could help someone. Do not miss the chance to greet someone, to say hello, to share in someone's sorrow or joy because that chance might not come again. So habang tayo may mga schedule sa buhay, meron tayo mga gustong gawin, we must have a certain healthy level of tentativeness so that we could pay attention to people when they need it, not that we may be possessed by regrets later if they suddenly went on a self-destruction while well, we could have helped them in their moment of weakness. That is one great temptation of the modern age, to be a slave of your clock, of your schedule, and then to be unkind and impersonal. Nilikha tayo para maging mabuti sa kapwa. Accompany someone. It's a great ministry. Samahan nyo ang isang nalulungkot. Mahalay nyo ang pagsama nyo lang nakapigil sa kanya na tumalon sa ilog. Samahan nyo ang isang nalilito. Mare ang pagsama nyo ay nagligtas sa kanya sa pagsama sa isang lalong sisira sa kanya. Tapunan natin ang pansin, ang sino mang nangangailangan ng pansin, limusan ng panahon, ng nangangailangan ng ating panahon. Dahil ang mga tao, may mga panahon ng kahinaan, panahon ng kalungkutan, nakapwa tao lang. Specifically, certain persons ang pwedeng tumulong. Genesis 2.18 The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. And it doesn't only mean the context of matrimony, but to be alone in your sorrow, to be alone in your difficulty, to be alone in your trials, and even to be alone in your victory and happiness could be miserable. Sabi nga ng isang sine, success could be nothing without someone to share it with. Be good to someone in a bad situation of aloneness. Drop whatever you're doing, reschedule your life, and be a nurse, be a caregiver, be a willing ear, be a friend. Nakita niyo yung magbiyanan na si Ruth at Naomi? 
Nung namatay ang anak ni Naomi na asawa ni Ruth, uuwi na si Naomi sa kanyang sariling bayan at pinapauwi na rin niya yung manugang niyang si Ruth sa sariling bayan. Pero naawa sa kanyang kanyang manugang at awa siyang iwan dahil matanda na siya at siya manay balo na rin. Ruth 1.16 Ruth answered to Naomi, Please don't tell me to leave you and return home. I will go where you go. I will live where you live. That is great commitment. Probably not all of us can give that kind of commitment to everyone. But to commit a certain hour, a certain day, a certain afternoon, even a week perhaps, is not too much to help someone in a very horrible situation. Giving of yourself, especially your company, is very evolved charity. Napakataas na uri ng kawang gawa ang maglimos ng pansin lalo't hindi hinihingi dahil nahihiya yung nangangailangan ng pansin. Huwag nating ipagsiksikan lang ang sarili sa taong gusto natin na makasama. Pwede rin tayong maglimos ng pansin sa taong siya naman ang nangangailangan ng ating companionship. Lalo't hindi naman tayo i-exploit. Hindi ka naman ginagawang romantic object, eh wala ka namang romantic interest sa kanya. Siyempre, ibang usapan na yun. Pero yung makakapagbigay ka ng pansin, charity yun. Hindi lang pera ang inililimos, naglilimos ka rin ang pansin. Even, and especially if the people have their religious convictions different from yours. Kung isa kasi lumiliit yung mundo natin, ang gusto lang natin bigyan ng pansin, yung kapatiran natin, yung kapwa natin ng pananalig, tapos matigas na ang puso mo doon sa iba. Sabi mo pa, hmm, kaya nagkakahirap-hirap yan sa buhay kasi iba ang pananalig. Hindi spiritualidad yun, religyoso lang ang pagiging ganun. Maging si Paul, lagi niyang kailangan ng kasama. If you read the New Testament, it is full of Paul's requests for companionship. For instance, 2 Timothy 4, 9-11. Do your best to come to me quickly. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. You think that a spiritual person like Paul would always be delighted being alone with the Lord. But we have a lot of verses expressing Paul's need for human company. Paul always needed and wanted people around him. Company comforted him. Company made him accomplish much. And look how many benefited in all places at all times. Be nice. Change your plans for someone you care about. Be flexible enough as to be kind. Responsiveness is good religion. Sometimes we strive to be too efficient. Sometimes we're very efficient to the point that we have clockwork precision. But are we good? Are we nice to people? Sometimes the sacrifice is just small. Sometimes it is big. Sometimes it is big enough as to let you drop off graduate studies to be with someone who is stricken with a terrible illness. Sometimes it is letting go of wedding plans and deferring it for a few months because somebody needs your attention like a very sick parent. Do not be possessed by regrets when people who matter or people who love us miss our attention because we are busy pursuing many other goals and things. Dapat handa tayo kuminsan na itabi, isa-isang tabi, ang mga pangarap, ang mga plano, paghintayin kahit sumandali dahil merong nangangailangan ang ating pansin. That is what life is all about. Even the Lord Jesus, when the people of Samaria prevailed upon Him to stay several days in their village, He did. Hindi niya sinabing, busy ako. That's not in my schedule. That's not in my plan. John 4.40 So when the Samaritans came to Him, they urged Him to stay with them, and He stayed two days. Not two hours. Two days. Did Jesus need them? The Samaritans needed Him. 
So he stayed. They needed him. Be sensitive as to when you should sing this song. As long as she leads me, I know where I must be. Tama na. Ano man mawili kayo? Di ba ganun talaga ang pag-ibig? Kailangan niya ako eh, kaya ako nandito. Hindi naman dahil laging kailangan ko siya. Kailangan ka kasi. The Lord stayed a few more days in Samaria instead of going straight to Galilee. He shows us the way. You have plans, but keep them tentative when there's an urgent need for you. Galatians 4.14, Even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God. Isipin niyo itong pagtanaw na ito ng sumulat ng utang na loob. Sabi, kahit pabigat ako sa inyo, kahit napakalaking hirap ninyo, na pinaglilingkuran niyo ako dahil sa aking karamdaman, nung makita niyo ang mukha ko, welcome na welcome ako. Naramdaman ko na gusto gusto niyo nandun ako kahit pa ako pabigat. Nakita niyo kung paano kabilis gumaling ang taong may sakit kung gano'n ang ating pagtingin. Hindi yung kung mayroon ng may sakit ang darating, halos pagsarahan mo na ng pinto dahil abala, dahil wala kang mapapakinabang, ikaw pa yung baka magastosan. Kailan natin at sa paano mga paraan natin ibababa yung mataas ang mga ideya ng relihiyon para bumaba sa spirituality sa pang-araw-araw nating buhay? Kailan nalalaman na tayo makadyos nga sa dami ba ng memorized verses? Sa galing ba natin makipag o makipagtalo? O sa mga maliliit at mga mamunting bagay na pagpapakita natin ng kagandahang loob? Yun ang mahalaga kay Jesus. Be nice. Especially when you're on a high moral ground, do not manipulate people's guilt or gratitude. Huwag nating pipilipitin ang mga tao, imamaniobra, kukontrolin dahil nagkaroon sila ng kasalanan at may atraso sila at kaya natin silang paikutin dahil guilty sila. At lalo naman, huwag nating pagsasamantalahan ang pagtanaw ng iba ng utang na loob. Do not manipulate people when they are grateful to you, when you have done them great things. You could add the good things that you have done to them and you could add their freedom, that they may be free even to refuse your requests. That is great kindness. Do not let people be enslaved by you simply because you have done them good or simply because they are guilty and therefore they could be manipulated. This is the vice of most organized religion for centuries. Manipulating people because they feel guilty, making them pay a very high price for their sins while enriching the church. Manipulating mission field so that they'll be grateful to the missionary forever to the point that they are colonized and they're abused. Parang salamat kinolonize nyo kami. Salamat sinakop nyo kami kasi nakakilala kami sa Diyos. Yes, salamat nakakilala kami sa Diyos pero dapat malaya kami sumamba at hindi kami maging alipin ng mga misyonero. Dapat mahalaga yun. It is so easy to take advantage of ignorance, of poverty, of spiritual darkness. But people that really want to reflect God's goodness will resist the temptation to play God, to receive homage, and to manipulate people. First Thessalonians 4 5, No one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him, especially in the name of God. Ang dami-daming pang-aabuso ng mga religyoso sa mga tao in the name of God. Kaya dapat ang tao yung mulat. Ang pagtanaw ng utang na loob ay hanggang hindi lang napapariwara ang sarili mong puri o dangal o espiritu. Napakahalagang makalaya. Lalo sa mga lipunan tulad ng sa atin, na tayo sinakop, sobrang maraming kahirapan, so hindi natin maiwasan magkaroon ng utang na loob sa mga mayayaman, sa mga makapangyarihan, tuloy na dadagdagan ng exploitation nila. Jesus sets free the Spirit of God True spirituality releases the human spirit so that it will be dignified to respect others and itself. 
Kaya mahalaga maging nice. Mga kapatid, kung kayo'y mapaburol at tinitingnan na inyong bangkay ng mga naglalamay, nawa ang masabi nila, napakabait ng taong ito. Napaka-nice ng taong ito. At kahit pa nga hindi dumarating yung panahon na yun, hihintayin pa ba natin na mapuri tayo doon lamang sa mga ganyang mga sinasabi pag may mga burol-burol? Let our actions reflect the lofty ideals of godliness. Bring the cookies to the lower shelves where everyone can reach them. Religiosity must be turned into practical daily spirituality where your goodness and kindness reflect heaven and you give an advanced par uh, taste of heaven to people who are longing for it. Being nice takes time. Being nice takes effort. But being nice is what deep spirituality is all about. That you give to the point of hurting like Jesus did. Actually, He gave to the point of dying. Kailangan meron tayong balikan, mga basic values of sacrifice, which is against the common thread of society's orientation now, which is always instant pleasure. But there is great purification when we do needful sacrifice for others. The basics of spirituality that must never be lost, no matter what the medium of religion becomes. Be known for being nice. Make Jesus known through your kindness, not your speech, not even your theology, and not even your religious self-promotion. Jesus is relevant where people hurt, where people need attention and care. And that is the best way to bring Jesus to others and even to ourselves. Dear God, we thank you that you are good to us, that you are kind. Teach us, O oh God, to be exponents of your goodness. Teach us to be channels of blessings to people. Teach us to bring the goodness of Jesus everywhere we go. Not only ideals and ideas, but actions. Actions that nurture, that nourish, that encourage. Actions that lift others up. Patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga pagkukulang at mga pagkakamali. Ipaalala mo sa amin, Panginoon, ang mga, pag, mga pananagutan namin sa aming kapwa. At nawa makita mo na kami matapat na ang mga karunungang natututunan namin sa iyo, Panginoon, magbunga ng mabubuting gawa sa aming buhay. Let us reflect in some moments of silence and ask the Spirit of God to further guide us into practical applications of these noble ideals. Pamingi tayo sa Panginoon ng kakayanan na lalo pang gawing totoo ang kanyang kabutihan sa ating buhay. Nawa sa ating pananahimik, ibunyag ng Espiritu ang ating mga kakulangan sa kapwa o ang ating mga pagmamalabis. At tayo'y maging handang matuto, maituwid, maluwalhati ang Diyos, at maging mabuti tayo sa ating kapwa. Let's be alone with the Lord in silent reflection for a while.